There's two different ways that this notation can look, but we're going to compose functions. So to give you the notation for composition, um, it says the composition of a function g with a function f is written as, and I'm going to write this in this box, it's an f and then a parentheses and then a g and then another parentheses with an x in it, so two parentheses, and then you have a fourth parenthesis. So it looks very complicated, but it's not, I promise. And there's two ways you can read this. Most of the time, it would be read as f of g of x. The other way you can read that, and really the only reason I don't usually use this is because it's more words and longer to say, and I'm lazy. So um, you can also read that as f composed with g of x. So both of those are interchangeable. I usually just call it f of g of x because like I said, it's less words to say. That sounds so lazy, but it's true. Okay, so f of g of x. Really, these problems, they're not bad. The notation throws people off, I think, at first. But um, another way that this can be written is what I have right here. And you would read that the same way, f of g of x or f composed with g of x. It has like a little open circle in between the two functions you're going to compose. And that is actually an operation symbol for composition. So if you see, it's not multiplication. Sometimes people confuse that, but it's like a, bless you, like a little open circle in between the two functions. If it's in that format, whatever's closer to your number or variable, here it's an x, whatever's closer goes first. If it's in the parentheses format, you work from the inside out. All right, now I'm going to write a bunch of work on these first three questions just so you guys can get the hang of it, but you do not have to write all the steps. I'm going to write if this makes sense to you, okay? I'm just going to try and show you where this comes from. So we're going to compose these two functions. I have f of x, and the function rule there is 5x plus 4, and I'm also going to use the rule for g of x, which is x minus 4. Anytime you have a composition, it's going to be basically two problems in one. And it's going to be like what we were doing previously. If you're working with a number, your answer should be a number. If you're working with your, a letter, we're going to do that on the back. Um, if you're working with a letter, your answer should going to be an expression of some kind. All right, now, just my hang-up. I kind of prefer the parenthesis notation, so I'm going to rewrite each of these so you can see this. But this says f of g of x, or f, or sorry, f of g of 6, or f composed with g of 6. The other format would be to write it f, and then parentheses, g of 6. That's the other way you could write that same thing. Now, like I just mentioned, this is just two problems in one. It's not hard, it's just the notation that throws people off. What you want to do first, I'm going to work from the inside out, is just figure out what g of 6 is. All right, so my first step, I'm just going to figure out what's g of 6. So using the function rule, it's x minus 3. Everywhere you see an x, you just replace it with the number they give you, which is 6 here. Actually subtract that, 6 minus 3 is 3. Okay, not the answer to the question. So remember I just said two problems in one, that's like the first problem. Okay, now, to get the answer, what you do is you substitute what g of 6 is equal to in place of that g of 6. So to get the actual answer to the question, when I compose these, I'm going to do f of that answer I just got, which was 3. And then what I get when I evaluate this will be my actual answer to the question. So f, the different function rule there, is 5x plus 4. So everywhere I see an x, I'm just going to replace it with the 3. And if I simplify that, I'm going to get 15 plus 4, which is 19. And so that's going to be the actual answer to the question would be 19. So it's kind of two problems in one. You're going to start with g of 6 there, find that number. Whatever that number is, plug it into the other function you're composing it with, and then simplify. That's your answer. Does anybody have any questions? It's weird, but that's all it is. Okay, let me try another one. So this next one, and it matters, whichever the notation is, this is different than the first question. So this one is g of f of negative 7. If you've got the notation with the little circle, whatever's closer to the number goes first. So I'm going to plug in negative 7 to the f of x function first, or if you like the parentheses notation, 
that's what I was used to, so that's what I like a little bit better. You just work from the inside out. So in this one, the f of x function rule is going to get used first. We're just going to plug in negative 7. So it would be 5 times negative 7 plus 4. And then, <coughs> let's see, it would be negative 35 plus 4, so negative 31. So two problems in one, that's the first problem. Once you get that number, you're just going to substitute that in for f of negative 7, because f of negative 7 is going to be equal to that negative 31. The, the actual answer, we're going to plug that into the g function. So negative 31, just make sure you're looking at the correct function rule. In that case, g of x is x minus 3, so it would be negative 31 minus 3. So my actual answer to the question is what I get when I simplify this, which should be negative 34. And I'm just going to do one more. You can, it doesn't happen all the time, but you can compose a function with itself, which is what I have written here, f of f of 8 is how you would read that. So basically, I'm just going to use the same function rule twice. So I'm going to start out either work from the inside out or if you like the notation with the little circle in between better just whichever one is closer goes first in this case you're going to use the f of x function for both so I'm going to figure out what f of 8 is so my rule there is 5x plus 4 everywhere you see an x you just replace it with that number 8 so 5 times 8 is going to give you 40 if you add 4 to that we're going to get 44 so there's my first problem and then I'm going to do my second problem. So I just use the exact same function again here. So just use f again, but we're going to plug in 44. So we would have 5 times 44, and then add 4 to that. Don't judge, I'm going to use my calculator. Should be 224. And the 224 is your actual answer to the question after you've performed the composition. Again, you don't have to write out all that work. I'm just trying to show you, since this is probably the first time you've seen this, where this is coming from. Um, <clears throat> what I'm looking for is the answer that I got as my second part of the question as I was going through that. Okay, I'm going to have you guys try the three underneath here. So I'm just going to give you a couple minutes. See if you can compose these together. The function rules are different here. So this one has f of x is an absolute value of 3x plus 2. And then the g of x is a square root of x plus 4. Now, I promise none of the answers are weird. You don't have to simplify any radicals. Anything that involves the square root should be a perfect square as you go through. So each one of these questions does have a nice answer. So go through, see if you can do those three questions real quick. Okay, don't Okay, I'm going too slow. All right. Who can tell me? What would we get? Did anybody get number four? Feeling good about g of f of negative 10. What did we get there? Ellie, what would you get? Should be six. Okay. Anybody not get six? Want me to go over it? Okay. What about f of g of 77? Did anybody get that one? The one in the middle there? 
29th should be 29th. Anybody not get that? Want me to go over it? Okay, and I got one more. This is G composed with G of 3,596. Anybody get that one? What'd you get? Should be eight. Okay, anybody not get eight? All right, sweet. Now, the one at the bottom, just really quick here, is a composition of three functions together at once. All right, so there's just three different function rules, and this is the same thing as we were doing above. It just adds another layer to it, basically. So I'm going to work from the inside out. So the first thing I would find, this says f of g of h of 2. It's not bad. It's just going to be three problems in one. So I would do h of 2 first. So I'm just going to make sure I pick the correct function rule there. The h of x function is x squared plus 1. So it would be 2 squared, which is 4 plus 1, would be 5. Now, what I would then do, the next letter I see, if I'm kind of working from the inside out, is the g function. So h of 2 is 5. So then what I would do is g with a 5 plugged in. That function rule is 3 times x. So it just would be 3 times 5, which would be 15. And then the ultimate answer to the question is going to be to plug 15 into the f of x function because the f is on the far outside. So I would just do 2 times 15, which is 30, minus 1 is 29. So the actual answer to the question when you compose all three would be 25. Does anybody have a question about putting three together? <coughs> okay, now. The back, I'm not going to lie to you, this is a little bit more work because we're going to do variables. So if they ask you to compose a function and in the parentheses you have a number, your answer is going to be a number. If they ask you to compose a function and you've got a variable, like these are all going to have an x, then my answer is going to be some kind of expression that's going to have an x in it. Almost, I don't want to say always, it might be a fluke situation where your variables cancel out, um, but it should be a situation where you have an expression as your answer. Okay, I'm going to write this out so you can see it, but you don't have to do this. This first question gives me two functions, and I feel like these might have been the ones we were using on the front, but um, this would be read f composed with g of x or f of g of x. Okay, now g of x is actually the function rule, which is x minus 3. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and plug that expression in everywhere you see an x in the f of x function. Okay, so you totally skip this if you want to. So like on the front, if I did f of 3, I would write f parentheses 3. What I'm plugging in for x here is the expression x minus 3. That's just going to be notation there on the left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do 5. And then in place of x, I just put this whole expression, which is just x minus 3. And then don't forget the rest of that function rule had a plus 4. So then I just put plus 4 on the end. Now, literally all you're going to do is just maybe some simplification, maybe a, a distributive property here, combine like terms. That's all you're going to do. And the expression we get is going to be our answer. So I have to take 5 times x and negative 3 there. So it would be 5x minus 15 and then plus 4, and then if you can combine, like I could put the negative 15 and the 4 together, this should be 5x minus 11, and then that expression is going to be my answer. If I put those two functions together in a composition, that's what I'm going to get. Now, it's not necessarily the same if you flip it over. So this next question, literally the same two functions, but this question is g of f of x. So when I do this one, I'm going to take the f of x function, and everywhere I see an x in the g of x function, I'm going to replace that x with that expression. All right, so if you wanted to write the notation, which you don't have to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do g with 5x plus 4 plugged in. Okay, now, just so you can see it, I'm going to put some parentheses, but I really don't need to do this here. So the g of x function is x minus 3. So in place of x, I would put the 5x plus 4, and then I would have the minus 3. I really don't need the parentheses there. I'm just trying to show you that I'm plugging that whole thing in for x. And then all you got to do is simplify. So there's nothing to distribute here. There wasn't anything in front of the x. 
So I'm just to just drop those parentheses, combine your like terms. This one would be 5x plus 1. And so you can see they're not the same. So if you flip them over, they're not, it's not like 5 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 5. It's not commutative if you flip over which function is composed with which. It can give you two totally different expressions. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, let me have you guys look at this. So <clears throat> I have two different function rules. Again, this one is f of g of x. So what that means is I'm going to take the g of x function, which is a quadratic for this example, x squared plus 2x minus 8, and I'm going to plug that in everywhere I see an x in the f of x function. All right, so I'm going to write the 3. Now, in place of x, I have to write that whole quadratic. So if you've got more than one term, just put it in parentheses because you're going to need to use a distributive property. So I got x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then this is the, always the thing people make a mistake. See, there's a minus 1 on the end of that, so just don't forget the minus 1. Because the function rule was 3 times x, which we replace with that quadratic, and then minus 1. And then this just like a little bit of distributive property and combine like terms. It's not bad. This would be 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. And then I had that minus 1 on the end. So all simplified, it should be 3x squared plus 6x minus 25. And again, don't if, if this is not the case for this problem, but if it's something that you're like, oh, I could factor that, or don't factor it, just leave it in standard form. Um, you know, don't divide everything by 2 or 3 if you got a greatest common factor. Just leave it all multiplied out when you do these questions. Now, this next one, and I will tell you up front, this is like the hardest problem that you'll see in this entire unit. And it's not bad, I promise. But this one is g composed with f of x, or g of f of x, which means I'm going to take the f of x function and plug that in everywhere I see an x in the g of x function. The reason that this is trickier, there are two different places that I have to plug that in because I have two different x's in that g of x function. So this one's going to be a little bit more work. It's not bad, but it's a little bit more work. All right, so instead of x squared, I'm going to write 3x minus 1, and that is squared. So I'm plugging that whole expression in place of the x. Then it's plus 2x, but i got to replace x again with that expression, 3x minus 1. And then I had a minus 8 at the very end. So i got to replace it two different ways. Okay, what would you do to simplify 3x minus 1 squared? Got a FOIL. Please don't distribute. I know somebody wrote 9x minus 1. We can have a fight about it later. But um, anytime you got subtracting or adding in parentheses that are squared or cubed or whatever, don't distribute the exponent. It's only if it's multiplication. So adding and subtracting, don't forget, you should be doing 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. Otherwise, you're going to completely miss out on the middle term and mess it up. Now, here I could just do a little distributive property with the 2, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So this is going to end up being, what, plus 6x minus 2 minus 8. And then the only other thing i got to do, just real quick, let me foil this. Or you could draw a box if you like the box. Just don't distribute the exponent because you won't have a middle term and you need that. If I do a little foil there, what do we got? 9x squared minus 3x minus another 3x and then plus 1 because I have negative 1 times 1. And I'm just going to bring down the rest of that mess. And from there, I just combine like terms. All right, so I've only got a 9x squared. I don't have any other terms that are squared. Let me see what I got. Um, negative 3, negative 3, and 6. Oh, added together, actually, those will cancel each other out to be negative 6 and 6. So you won't have a term with an x. And then numbers here, I've got 1, minus 2, and minus 8. So all combined together, that would be negative 9. And again, don't, don't pull out a 9. You can factor this, but don't. We're just going to leave it in standard form. And like I said, that is the hardest type of problem with, you, with the composition that you would have to do because I had to FOIL, but it's just some algebra skills from first semester. Is anybody having a question? Okay. Now, the last problem that I have on here with the composition. We're going to do this today, but we're going to do a little bit more with it tomorrow, actually. 
is going to kind of introduce the next lesson a little bit. But um, I'm going to compose these functions together. They look a little more complicated, right? I got a square root. I haven't had those in any of the problems. So for the first one, this is f of g of x. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to take the g of x function, which is square root of x minus 9, and I'm going to put that in place of x in the f of x function. So that's what I'm going to do first. All right. Now, instead of x squared, I'm just going to put some parentheses, right? In place of that x, I'm going to write the square root of x minus 9. So that whole thing would just be in parentheses, and we'd square it, and then plus 9. What does that first term become? I got square root of x minus 9 squared. Yeah. X minus square root and squared cancel each other out. Okay, so here's what I got. I got x minus 9 plus 9. And guess what? That 9 and negative 9 cancel each other out. The answer there, if you compose those two functions, um, f of g of x, is just x. Just x. Okay, now the other one goes backwards. So this is g of f of x, and in that case, I'm going to take the f of x function, which is the x squared plus 9, and I'm going to put that in for x in the g of x function. <clears throat> okay, this is going to look a little bit weird. So the g of x function, the whole thing is under a square root, right? It's x minus 9. Instead of x, I'm going to write this expression, which is x squared plus 9, and then don't forget the minus 9 that was part of the g of x function rule. Now, hopefully you guys know the square root symbols act like parentheses. You've got to simplify that down all to one thing before you try and take a square root. So what I would do there is, you could, and you could skip this step if you want, but I can just drop those parentheses. There was nothing for me to distribute or anything. And I can add the 9 and negative 9 together. So totally one term under the square root all simplified would leave me with just the square root of x squared. Can I take the square root of x squared? Like, what would I write? x. Yeah, just x. Mm -hmm. Just x. If you're like, what the heck, where'd you get that from? Um, the index on a square root is a 2, and if you divide the exponent by the index of the root, it would just give you x to the first. So square root and squared cancel each other out, leave you with the c x. And we'll look at this a little bit more tomorrow. There's one problem like this on the homework tonight. Okay, is anybody having...